Hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I am a first year osteopathic medical student in the US and I'm also an Air Force second lieutenant in the HPSP program. And today I'm going to be talking about how I went directly from ROTC into HPSP, so directly into medical school. I'm gonna be talking about how I did this, some tips, what you need to do. And if you are in ROTC about to transition to HPSP, I'm gonna give some insight on how it's different compared to your classmates. The video is also for you if you're just curious about how I did this and my journey to medical school and HPSB. So let's get into it. So I'm first going to go over some general tips of things that you need to know about taking this path. I'm going to go and talk about each year of college and what you need to do specifically for each in pre-med stuff and in ROTC. So first off, you need to be extremely organized and know exactly what you're doing with your classes. You need to sit down and talk with your pre-med advisor and basically map out all of your classes with your major and your pre-med classes and your ROTC classes for all four years. Um, if you miss a class, then it's on you and it's gonna affect you and your timeline. So you need to make sure that you know exactly when classes are being offered. Some classes are only offered in the fall and then some only in the spring. So make sure you plan this accordingly with your MCAT, with ROTC, with applying for medical school, everything. It's not easy, but it's on you and you have to do this for yourself. Um, try to gain leadership experience in ROTC, hit the ground running in it. I don't come from a military family, so I was very intimidated at first being in that military environment because I was not used to that, but I quickly got used to it. I started gaining confidence and leadership skills in ROTC, which then helped me gain uh, confidence to do leadership stuff in extracurriculars outside of it on campus. And then it also set me up for success while in ROTC because I already had that strong foundation and they started to really see me blossom and develop as a leader. Um, also really start to plan out when you're going to get your clinical experience. It's really important to get clinical experience going into medical school and you are on a time crunch because you're an ROTC, especially if you want to do this in four years, it's a big time crunch. It is. Um, if you want to do it in five, year, that five years, that's completely okay. I know someone that went from five years of ROTC in undergrad into HPSB directly and a lot of people do that for um, just going into medical school in general. So that's perfectly okay. But figure out when you're going to do your clinical experience. I suggest doing, doing it in the summer. And then that brings me to another really important overview point is take advantage of your summers while you're in ROTC. Your summers are your free time to do the stuff that you need to do to be competitive for medical school. For example, after my first summer, I worked at a research internship and I got um, 400 hours plus of research experience because I was doing 10 weeks of 40 hour weeks of research experience for this research project that I was working on that summer. Then after my second year, I was a scribe at the emergency department, was getting paid and got clinical experience and really took advantage of that time. And then after my third year, studied for the MCAT, took the MCAT, and then was a cadet training assistant at Afrazi Field Training at Maxwell Air Force Base, where I got great leadership experience, earned some money, it's not very good money, and then I was able to make incredible connections, and I met an officer who wrote me a letter of recommendation for a incredible scholarship that I got. Um, basically, you need to be in control of yourself and your life and your goals. It's very hard. It's a time crunch. It's a grind. You need to take care of yourself. Um, reach out for mentors. Be a mentor to other cadets and other people when you are in your junior and senior year to give back to those people that gave to you and just let them know what you want to do and make it happen for yourself. So going into the individual years of college and ROTC stuff, this is what I did and this is what I suggest that you do. So you need to know exactly which classes you're going to take and start off strong, have a strong freshman year GPA so you can fall back on it when things get super hard in your sophomore year and your junior year. Start off as strong and just get these classes, these basic classes, do well in them so then you can build on that knowledge and you're not freaking out and you didn't learn things well early on. Early on. Um, really try to get a strong foothold in ROTC and start showing that you're a great leader. Um, just really start volunteering for things, doing as much as you can and getting involved. I was in Arnold Air Society, which is in um, Air Force ROTC, so I suggest doing that. It makes you a really competitive cadet and then there's great leadership opportunities from that. Um, your sophomore year, this is going to be a harder year in ROTC and it's definitely a harder year academically because you are starting, you are taking organic chemistry this year traditionally and then you might start taking physics in the spring semester. You might start taking other harder classes, more labs. 
it's very hard. ROTC gets harder. The second semester of ROTC in Air Force ROTC is arguably the hardest semester because you're preparing for field training. So field training is basically your biggest leadership evaluation in the ROTC program. It happens between your second and third year at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. <laughs> it's very hot there. And basically, you're going to take all of your ROTC knowledge from your first and second years, and you're going to get evaluated on it. It's about two weeks right now. They change the time of it, and they kind of switch around like the timing of it and the evaluations, but it's essentially the same thing. You're getting graded on everything, so you're preparing for this your second year. And I understand at the same time that it's also a very hard time for uh, your pre-med classes. So this is a grind time. This is why you have a higher GPA in your freshman year. Set yourself up for success. Continue to do leadership in ROTC, but also do leadership outside of it, and then stick to those extra extracurriculars. It's better to do three extracurriculars, make a difference in those clubs, and be on the e-boards of them, than to do eight extracurriculars and just be members of those clubs and kind of have nothing to show for your membership of them. So really work on those. And then also what I did was, as I said, I was a scribe in between my summer of my second and third year. So I interviewed for that position in April of my sophomore year, was getting all the onboarding and training stuff um, finished while I was basically doing finals of my sophomore year classes. And then I was able to be a, an emergency department scribe before I went to field training. I went to field training and then I was a scribe for the whole rest of the summer. Um, and I was able to get 450 hours of clinical experience and then also earn money because it was a job. So that was great. Um, and also during this time, you need to be telling your cadre, which is your officers that are in charge of you in ROTC, that you're interested in doing a pre-health program so then they can just be on alert and then helping out with you and then making sure that they know the way that they're supposed to go about nominating you for your pre-health slot which i'm going to talk about the pre-health slot soon because that's for junior year so in your junior year you're basically um finished with a lot of your hard pre-med classes you're like finishing up physics probably you're probably going to take biochemistry it's not the easiest to just make sure that you can do well on it because then it shows up on the mcat so also at this time you need to be start preparing for your MCAT study plan. You, you need to make a really good plan and it's going to be really hard to study during classes um, with everything going on, but you need to take this MCAT by um, basically June of your junior year, the June right after your junior year. Um, and when I took mine was June 15th. Uh, so you need to make that separate MCAT study plan. This video isn't for that, but make sure you do research on that specifically. And there was things that I would do differently, but we could talk about that a different day. Um, basically start getting your personal statement ready, start preparing it, like start thinking about it and how it's going to be in like January of your junior year, if you're going to apply that summer, because you really don't want to rush that. That's the time where it's like your time to shine, show your personality, get that ready, have someone review it, work on that for a long time, go through drafts of it. Also at the same time during junior year, you need to be making sure that you have your letter recommenders, um, like you need to know who they are in your head and then i let mine know in like january of that year that i was applying and even though they wouldn't have to send me the letters until may i let them know in january because it was just considered of their time and then if they had any questions or if they were like wanting me to they were wanting to ask me like how i wanted the letter to be written if there was anything that i wanted them to say in it then i still had a lot of time to tell them that and then they could take that information edit it not have to rush it all so really let your letter recommenders know as soon as you can so i recommend january of the year that you're about to apply so they have like five months to do it because it's really good for their time um also during this time you need to make sure that you schedule your mcat to be um you need to make sure that you schedule your MCAT and that you're able to get your results back before the pre-health board meets. So what is the pre-health board? It's basically a board of like Air Force ROTC officers that determine whether or not you are allowed to pursue this um, pre-health track. So you've been working this whole time up three years of your medic of your undergrad career for all of this pre-health stuff, pre-med stuff. But the Air Force, if you are a contracted cadet, they still are expecting you to go into active duty. So you have to get the approval from this pre-health board and you have to have them say, yes, you can go, you can go to medical school before you go to active duty. And it's basically so they can keep track of like how many people 
are going where and how many doctors they're going to have. And then they know like who's going to be a pilot, who's going to be a cyber officer, who's going to be a doctor. They have to know and they have to keep track of all these numbers because it affects their numbers that they need for the Air Force and just for the Army, Navy, military. 2019 is when my board met for me because I graduated and commissioned in May 2020. So the board met in August 2019 the beginning of my senior year. So this is the timeline. The board is open from June 1st. It was open from June 1st, 2019 to June. So this was the timeline for 2019 when I was applying to medical school and when I was in my senior year. So the board was open from July 1st to August 1st. This is when your commander is able to put in online and send in your information for the pre-health board. He's gonna need, well, they're gonna need your GPA, MCAT score, and your commander's ranking, basically. It's the commander ranking you on like your leadership stuff and everything that you've done and all of that. That's what your commander needs to send in from July 1st to August 1st. And then um, on August 15th, 2019 of that year, the pre-health board met. They basically looked at all the candidates, all of the cadets that wanted to go to medical school or dental school or the um, the pre-health track. And they were like, okay, let's see how many of them can do it, if they're competitive, all of that. I believe 24 applied that year and 25, 25 applied that year and 24 were accepted. So it was a pretty high acceptance rate. And, but only 25 cadets out of the whole country had really made it to that board, made it that far, had everything together on time. So I learned about August 27th, 2019, that I got the yes, I got the go ahead from that board. And so they basically told me, yes, you can go to medical school. And then after that, you still have to serve your ROTC commitment time. And then with this yes, with this educational delay acceptance, they basically said, I can go to medical school instead of going right into active duty. Air Force ROTC will give you the HPSB scholarship right then and there because you would have to just apply for the scholarship anyway outside, but Air Force ROTC will give you the scholarship right then and there if you get that, um, if you get the pre-professional board. I know for Army ROTC, you have to apply for an educational delay, which is separate, and then you have to meet with a separate Army HPSB recruiter to get that Army HPSB scholarship. It's different with Air Force. So it was pretty nice that I didn't have to go through and like talk with the recruiter and get accepted and do an interview for HPSB that way. So then I just knew that I had the HPSB scholarship and that was great. And then at that point, I was just waiting to get my medical school acceptance and I just needed to show them by the time that I was commissioning that I had a medical school acceptance. So I got my first acceptance in February, 2020. And then I told them and sent in the paperwork that I had gotten the acceptance and things were good to go from there. So how was my journey different than my classmates that were going to be pilots, engineers, nurses, all of that in the Air Force while I was going to medical school? Basically, the only difference while I was actually in college still was that I was filling out more paperwork than them than around the time that we were doing our commissioning paperwork. Because when you're about to commission and fully become an officer, um, going from ROTC cadet to officer, there's a lot of paperwork that you have to fill out because you know, you're doing all this stuff and you're signing a lot of things and you're committing to the military or the Air Force fully. So I had to do that, but then I had to do extra paperwork because there comes a lot of paperwork with HPSP and all of that and the pay and the scholarship and just things with that that are separate than just ROTC paperwork. So I was doing more paperwork than them. Other than that, I just finished my degree. I actually got two bachelors of science, um, but I just finished my degrees and then I commissioned and graduated and everything was fine. Then moving on, I just prepared my life for medical school essentially. And it's almost as if I'm kind of not in the military. Sometimes it feels that way because I'm just doing straight medical school, all of that all the time. But that's kind of the point of HPSP is you need to do well in medical school, pass your classes, board exams, excel, be a competitive residency applicant. So then you can go and get a residency and then you're a full residency trained attending physician that can then serve in the military as like an Air Force physician or an army physician or whatever branch you may be in. So there's not much to do for um, military stuff while you're in HPSB, but I can talk about active duty rotations and just other stuff um, with the military and HPSB in medical school in a different video. Um, okay, I just want to say overall that this was not an easy journey for me. It was very hard for me to be able to do ROTC for four years and then um, also graduate, commission, take the MCAT, get a medical school acceptance in four years in time. It, I'm not like going to downplay this because it was really one of the hardest things that I've done in my life. It, I thought so many times that I wasn't going to be able to do it in this time frame. I didn't think that I was going to be good enough for medical school. I didn't think that I was going 
going to get the passing scores and do well on the MCAT and it was extremely hard <laughs> to balance all of this. There were so many times where I just felt like quitting or my mental and physical health were very low at certain times during my undergraduate career but I didn't give up and I really want to help people that are in ROTC that want to go directly to medical school or do a different path or do HPSP and I just want to tell you that you really need to be your own biggest advocate but if you're looking for a mentor or anyone to help you I've done this and I know that it's very hard so please leave your comments below let me know if you have any questions and again just be your biggest advocate reach out for help reach out for other mentors and you can always leave me questions and I'll do my absolute best to do answer them and I always answer people in the comments to the best of my ability. That was a little bit of my journey from ROTC to HPSP and in medical school and how I directly did it. Um, like I said before it was not easy but I'm there for you if you are looking for a mentor if you need someone to support you if you have any questions just about my journey in general even if you're not in ROTC or if you're not in medical school and you just think it's interesting just let me know and I'm more than happy to answer it and I always answer everyone in the comments so thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you have an amazing day and of course all of the opinions and views in this video are my own and they do not reflect the opinions or views of the United States Military Department of Defense or ROTC.